Uh, our, our thought has been you know, climate change is happening. Uh, we want to be a leader in, in the world, not just in Alberta, not just in Canada, around sustainability. So you will see us being part of the solution. Um, we think that that probably involves a price on carbon. We've seen it as um, you know, levies to uh, individual large emitting companies. We've seen it as a more broadly based carbon tax. And we want to be a part of the conversation so, so, so that the right solution is found. Do you think the other provinces are maybe taking a bit of a hard line on this? I think you know there's a range of a range of views across the provinces, and, it, and of course it, it depends partly on um, what their industry is and how, um, how how their economies work. So I think it's absolutely appropriate that um, uh, you know whilst there need to be um, a recognition of climate change and a recognition that we need to start to make some sensible changes uh, towards a lower carbon world, um, the solutions have to come from the individual provinces, from the individual uh, industries, so that they best help their economies going forward. Here at home in Alberta, of course, we have a bit of a change in leadership. The incoming Premier Jason Kenney has said he wants to take a much harder stance when it comes to things such as setting up a war room, turning off the taps. Where do you fall on that? I mean, again, I just go back to the, the, the principles. You know, my objective is to have Alberta open for business. So um, that means good regulation, um, good uh, public public policy. And that's not the perception of us around the world at the moment. So, um, you know, the counsel I would give, and, and you know, this is, um, I've, I've been around for 17 years uh, here, here, here in Alberta now. So I've had multiple, uh, multiple provincial governments, multiple uh, federal governments, and I've worked with every one of those. Uh, to try and get into the solution space. Uh, my advice is, you know, work with all of the interested parties, make sure that we get uh, Alberta open for business. We have a fabulous resource here in, in Alberta. We're not making the best of it um, for Alberta or for Canada. It's worth an absolute fortune. Everywhere else around the world would love to have uh, this, this resource that we've got. I mean, if you just, I, I was just looking at the numbers before I came uh, in, 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 in to talk to you. Um, you know, the taxation on oil sands is $25 billion a year. That's what pays for nurses and doctors um, and teachers. And we need to make the best of that because it belongs to all of us. Well, speaking about that, the taxation, the royalties, of course, you haven't been a big fan of the production cuts, but we heard from Sonova CEO Alex Porbet yesterday, and he said that it's crystal clear they worked, that it kept money in the province. How do you how do you feel about that? You haven't been a fan. Uh, no, I, I haven't been a fan. I've been very clear. I think that uh, markets have to work because in order for industry industries to invest, they need to be able um, to have some degree of confidence and certainty around the future. So I'm not a fan of uh, uh, intervention by governments. I think if I look at the you know the big puts and takes, I understand where um, uh, some of the other companies are coming from, um, but we designed a strategy and a company which was resilient to the full cycle. So. So, uh, you know, we made um, a healthy uh, return in the fourth quarter. We're going to make a very healthy return in the first quarter. So we're resilient to both types of uh, environment. But if I look at curtailment, I, I think it's very easy to see some of the benefits of it. Uh, you know, in the short term, um, the differentials have moved significantly, and um, the uh, royalty take and the uh, take for uh, some of the companies has, has increased. And that's good news, and I'm, I, I, I support that. The problem we had it was that there were going to be some unintended um, uh, things that would happen. Uh, the first one that we highlighted was around uh, uh, moving crude by rail. Our view was if the, if the differential became too tight, it would stop. That's what's happened, and, and, and the volumes are not moving. The second one was more longer term. So, you know, if you've got the uh, royalties increasing in cash intake, which is good in the short term, in the long term, the downside of it is investment is, is exiting uh, Alberta and Canada now. And that's because investors cannot be confident when governments will intervene next. So my two biggest fears are happening. So my advice would be, um, we've done some short-term good by having curtailment. Um, I think there are some things that could be done to uh, potentially improve it, but I would plan for an exit from it in a controlled way so that people, people can be confident uh, that the market is going to start to work again. Speaking about investment, we have been hearing from some high-profile people that the Canadian oil sands is uninvestable. This is something you said last summer. Is it something you stand by? Do you think the situation's gotten worse or better? I, I, I think certainly in the short term, that's the case. I mean, it's very difficult to predict um, uh, what's going to happen around, um, uh, around taxation, around royalties, around um, uh, government intervention. Um, uh, in the longer term, it's very difficult to predict exactly what's happening both provincially and federally uh, around uh, regulation 
population. Uh, so there is uh, an off, um, not, pati not just oil sands. I mean, as I travel the world, it's an off Canada signal. There is a lack of confidence that Canada is actually open for business. So I think it's really important we start to get some clarity on those things because, uh, you know, as I, where we started, we have a fantastic resource. Um, we have projects queued up that we have investors willing to invest in, but they lack confidence in the regulatory and competitive uh, side of Canada's economy. And yet we're seeing world-renowned investor Berkshire Hathaway investing in a big way again in Suncor. So what does that say that maybe some confidence is coming back? Um, I, mean, I think what it says is that uh, it's, it's, a, it's a recognition and a reflection of the resilient model that we've put together. So, and, and you know, when I say resiliency, I mean, you know, uh, when crude prices were high, when crude prices were low, um, when pipelines could take all of our product away, when there were constraints, when curtailment wasn't here, when curtailment came, Suncor is positioned to be uh, 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 in good shape through all of that, um, both operationally and financially. So, you know, even today with our expanded operation, we have access to market by pipeline for all of our products because we planned in advance. That was part of our strategy. So I think it's a bit of a reflection of the Suncor strategy that um, we're integrated and we're resilient through the cycle. Okay, well, despite some of the attempts we've seen in Alberta when it comes to carbon taxes and doing all of these things, we still have a reputation around the world known as the tar sands. And, you know, how do we get around that? What more do we have to do? Uh, I, I mean, I think it's, it's a, it's a never-ending journey of work. It's, a, it's, it's work that the companies have to do. Um, it's work that uh, local and, and, and federal governments have to do. It's work that all of us as as Canadian citizens have to do because we should be proud of our, our, our resource. Um, we are, I, I hear, we're making progress. So, uh, you know, if you poll across Canada now, the support is for the industry and for pipeline. If I go around the world, the preference would be to have Canadian oil. So, um, uh, you know, at the, in the international forum that I go to, um, the last few years have been about how can we make sure um, we can confidently start to plan our economies on Canadian gas and Canadian uh, oil. So I think we have to get ourselves open for business, become a reliable supplier, and the world wants uh, Canadian oil. Because their alternatives are, um, uh, you know, they can go to South America, they can go to Russia, they can go to the Middle East, and they would prefer to have Canada because it has a reputation um, uh, uh, as, as a reliable, uh, sustainable, um, properly regulated industry. Okay, well, now I have to completely switch tacks here. Only a few days left in the job. You've had a lot of career highlights. How would you like to be remembered? It's tough. I mean, I think I'd almost go back to what we've said in a sense, you know, um, I set myself three clear objectives. One was get the company operating really well. I'm very comfortable with that. The employees are in fantastic uh, uh, shape. They've got a great uh, leadership team. The second one was to get recognized for uh, capital discipline so that, uh, you know, when growth was right, we did growth. When acquisition was right, we did acquisition. When returning funds to shareholders was right, we did that. So I think we got the reputation for capital discipline. And the third one was I really really wanted to uh, get one of these mega projects done um, on, on cost, on schedule, and it do what we said it would do. Um, and Fort Hills has done that. So I'm, I'll be leaving a very, a, a very happy man. And we can only call it retiring in a very loose way. I mean, at the end of the day, you have just joined the board at TransCanada. What else are you hoping to still accomplish? Uh, yeah, I, you know, I plan to uh, live live in Alberta. I'm going to, uh, I'll be Canadian uh, for, for, forever now. Um, so I plan to live here, still be part of the community and uh, industry and help uh, where I can. I'm hoping to be on the uh, uh, TransCanada board next week. I don't get elected until uh, oh, uh, potentially until... I jumped the gun on oh, you. Oh, you jumped the gun, but that's fine. Until Friday. Right. It's in the, it's in the uh, proxy statement, so that's fine. Um, so it, it's public uh, it, it, it's public knowledge. So I'm hoping to go on that uh, board next week and, and still uh, play a part in the sector. And my wife has big plans for me.